What's going on, everyone? We hope you had a nice and relaxing weekend because we have another exciting week ahead of us in the stock market. On Friday, 87% of stocks in the S&P 500 closed up in the green. And as we could see by looking at the heat map, we had a handful of stocks make some pretty big moves. But also on Friday, we had Jerome Powell with his Jackson Hole Symposium event where he confirmed that we are are getting rate cuts. So in today's video, we're going to cover what the market tends to do once uh, we get to this point in the rate cut cycle. On top of that, we have some pretty big earnings this week uh, from companies like Nvidia and a handful of other ones. So be ready for that. And on top of that, we also had some uh, I guess you could say interesting developments happen over the weekend in the Middle East. So we have a lot to talk about today. We have a lot of great setups going to this week. So make sure to stick with us all the way until the end. But besides that, Tom, let's jump right into it. Yeah, Mike, and looking at the market from Friday, it ended up doing very well. We saw a nice pop, and uh, we are testing that high there, right around 563. So that's going to be a big level to watch coming up this week. Now, the all-time high is right above here at 565, but the SPY did run up and try to test that high last week. So that's going to be a big thing that I am looking for this week. But, you know, looking at the market a bit more from Friday, looking at the heat map, NVIDIA really led the way again, 4.5%. Tesla was up 45 nine percent as well in the financial sector also killed it helped the spy uh you know hold these highs but again the intraday price action was good at open and then it was just pretty much choppy throughout the day it couldn't really get that good breakout potential coming in but um mike you know everybody's been looking at my internet the past couple weeks and you know they've been like tom what's going on this is actually the first recording that i am using starlink and i'll tell you what i thought starlink was kind of going to be a gimmick where like maybe the satellite wouldn't pick up riot or something but it has actually been really good and very consistent so far so you know shout out to elon and starlink there but uh getting into this week mike you know you mentioned jerome powell uh and his event on friday with the jackson hole symposium he mentioned that the time has come for policy to adjust and it looks like the federal reserve is kind of laying the groundworks for this rate cut coming up soon Yes, and while this is great that Jerome Powell confirmed that it's time for rates to come down, he did not give any specifics in any way, shape, or form. Uh, he didn't tell us how big these rate cuts are going to be or even when they're going to happen, but when we look at market pricing, we can see the market is pricing in a 76% chance of a 25 basis point uh, rate cut on September 18th, and they're even pricing in a 24% chance of of a 50 basis point rate cut. So either way you look at it, right now we have rate cuts set to uh, come in on September 18th. And as time goes by, as we can see on this chart, our uh, rates are just expected to continue lower. What's really cool is that when we look at, uh, I guess you could say how the market tends to react to rate cuts, um, it is generally pretty positive in the short term at least right it depends on the outlook you're or the time frame you're looking at it but in the short term uh, as we can see by some historical data here whenever we saw a rate cut in all of the years listed on this chart the market tends to uh, move in a positively skewed way um, you know in the short term so with that being said that is nice to see but at the same time rate cuts are not like this situation where it's like okay rate cuts are here that means the market is automatically in you know you know just explosion mode because there have been times throughout history where you know we've seen rate cuts and for the market to continue going lower so just keep that in mind as well it's worth uh, keeping both arguments and both sides in mind yeah, what's interesting to me with this chart, Mike, is like right off the bat for like the first few trading days, you know, following the first cut, um, you can see there's a, there's a couple years that are up in the positive, but a lot of them kind of dip down there for the first couple of days. And then as we get towards like maybe like the 25th, the 30th day, then they all kind of start to, you know, get back more on that positive side. So I found that kind of interesting too, especially like right off the bat following the cuts. But, uh, you know, it's interesting when you look at this data, you know, 29. 
2019, 2007, 2001. Uh, normally, these are following, you know, pretty, uh, pretty big, significant times in the market. So, uh, you know, obviously, we're not seeing like a COVID crash or anything like that here. But it is interesting to look at this data. And then, Mike, we also have another chart here with uh, rate cuts and also just kind of showing the phases that they go on, how like, kind of like uh, how long they last and everything. Exactly. It's like we could have some rate cuts that last quite literally like three months, like in 2020, but we could have other rate cut phases like between 1989 and 1992 that last a long, long time. So definitely keep that in mind, but it's worth noting that some rate cuts can, you know, be very quick while others can be much longer while at the same time some rate cuts can you know come down from a rate of 10 percent while other rate cuts can only come down from like a rate of two percent so right now rates are right around or right above that five percent mark so we're right like uh i guess you could say in the middle portion of at least this uh, historical data. So I think the key takeaway is that when we see rate cuts, don't just automatically go to the, I guess you could say camp, that rate cuts are just this amazingly bullish thing and the market has to rise. We have seen many parts throughout history where the market has done well with rate cuts, but it also just depends on what's going on in the economy and the world and everything else at that time. So it's important to, as always, stay adaptable and you know continuously reassess the data as it comes in. Yeah, and that's exactly what Jerome Powell always says at a lot of his press conferences, right? That they're still going to look at the incoming data. And we have to realize also that there's still going to be some more inflation data coming out eventually as well. And that could still change the outlook on things depending on how that ends up coming in. But I would bet that Powell and the feds have a bit of an idea, you know, around uh, how that's going to come. But who knows? Maybe we'll see some surprises and, you know, everything's different, right? Like if we go back to some of those, um, some of those rate cutting phases, Mike, you can see that obviously some of these are in different economic times than others right like obviously we have a couple here in like the 80s and 90s but you know like 2020 and 2001 2002 2007 2008 like right during a lot of pretty critical economic times um as well so i don't know you know a lot of people say that we're in a recession already that's obviously an argument that uh i'll definitely see in the comments down below but uh you know i i think i always think it's funny mike because everybody's always like talking about rate cuts and then recession and it's just is so weird how they just changed that definition because uh you know in the history books who knows we might look back on this in five to ten years and you know call it the fake recession or something <laughs> yeah so another thing worth keeping in mind is as we look at let's say historical data or even you could say market expectations like the cme fed watch tool these are all about like these are all related to what's currently planned with the economy going forward but it's also important to keep in mind that there's a lot of crazy stuff stuff happening in the world right now that can kind of throw these plans off. Um, a prime, prime example of that would be like if we see inflation start to rip higher, uh, that would uh, definitely throw a wrench into this rate cut plan. And one thing that can definitely uh, throw inflation higher is the price of oil and just energy and just how that affects everything else going on in the world. And recently we saw that uh, tensions are rising quite again quite a bit again in the Middle East as Hezbollah basically launched a missile barrage at Israel um, this weekend and that just uh, increases tensions and as we all know uh, tensions in the Middle East and rising oil prices tend to go hand in hand so um, just keep an eye on this scenario because it's just like kind of like a black swan event risk or I guess you could call it you could call it a gray swan because we kind of already know about it <laughs> but um just keep this in mind as well because it can have bigger implications than most people think yeah, it definitely can. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about gold and silver a lot lately, and I would not be surprised to see like gold futures open up tonight, maybe a bit higher and uh, maybe even oil as well with this news. I would not be surprised to see it start to pop up a bit more in the short term. And I know oil has been kind of you know, making people scratch their heads lately because everyone's like, wow, these tensions are picking up, but oil's falling. And I think it's just because of the volatility, right? Like Iran backed off their, you know, their quick strike or their quick retaliation, right? They're like waiting a while now. And of course, we're seeing Hezbollah now start to attack. And oil is kind of at a crucial support. You know, we're looking at it on the chart. This uh, anywhere between like 70 to $73 has been pretty huge for crude oil over the past couple of years. And I, uh, I would not be surprised to see another bounce back up here come this week with crude and you know people are like well how could i play crude you know you can look at zom oxy cvx bp those are a few oil 
stocks there. And then there's also some ETFs like GUSH that uh, go up with oil as well. Absolutely. And of course, you have USO and then BNO as well. But uh, what's important with oil is that we could look at, let's say, news like this Hezbollah news and any other news, uh, specifically with conflicts in the Middle East. And it's easy to look at oil and be like, okay, wow, like this news and these events are happening, but oil's not moving. And, you know, sometimes that's just like how commodities are and just the market is as well. So, um, you know, if the if 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 the security's not moving, then it's important to just like adapt with it rather than trying to fight against it. Like what we have seen in the past are you know like geopolitical events develop and then just a lagged, delayed response in let's say the price of oil itself. So um, there are multiple ways to play this, but understand that when you you know trade things based off of geo geopolitical events, it's not always like um, like perfectly timeable. If that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. You know, at the same time as well, uh, the market's been kind of like expecting some of this stuff to happen, obviously retaliations and stuff. So that might be a bigger factor as well, you know, because people are kind of already in the mindset that this is going to happen. It's not necessarily like, oh, my God, Hezbollah did this. Wow. You know, it's, it's not very surprising at this point, you know, given just what everyone's been saying that they're going to retaliate and and etc. But whenever I'm looking at crude, Mike, I really do like this lower support. I would say on the daily chart, uh, there is a crucial level, like 64 to $70. If we start to see that break down over the next couple months, I'll be pretty worried. But in a longer term sense, I think that we'll end up holding up here pretty well and uh as time goes forward i'm definitely going to watch the tensions but for this week we did start to pop off a bit at the end of last week so i'm definitely going to keep it on the radar this week for sure like if we see cl futures start to open up a bit higher this morning or higher tonight and then monday morning i'm definitely going to be looking at oil stocks come uh, come it open monday too Sounds great. Well, another group of stocks you have to keep a very close eye on are some of the earnings stocks for this week. We have quite the lineup as uh, we have Pinduoduo on Monday before market open, but as uh, the week goes by, it just gets better and better. I would say... Uh, the action will really pick up on Wednesday and Thursday as on Wednesday we have Chewy, NVIDIA, CrowdStrike, Salesforce, and Affirm. And then as we get into Thursday, we have Best Buy, Dell, Lululemon, Alta, and Marvel. So we have, a, we have an exciting week ahead of us. We definitely do. NVIDIA, I mean, everybody's got to say NVIDIA is going to make this week better than last week, right? Uh, last week had some decent earnings too, don't get me wrong, but whenever I look at popular stocks out there, I mean, NVIDIA, CrowdStrike, Salesforce, I mean, Wednesday and After Hours alone beats last week, in my opinion. Plus, we have Chewy mixed in, Lulu. It's going to be a fun week, Mike. I know some of these stocks like Chewy have been pretty low. You know, you go to the daily chart, they've still been, um, you know, starting to pick up some steam but whenever you start to zoom out in the grand scheme of things they're still fairly low so it'll be nice to see chewy have a good report and we were looking at zoom a lot last week and look at how zoom started to pop up i'm obviously not saying chewy's gonna do this but you know some of these growth stocks have been moving amazingly on some of these reports yeah love to see it um, so yeah, keep a close eye on the earnings lineup for the week. We've seen a lot of great movement, just like Tom said. And then for the economic schedule this week, it's not all that. We do have some durable goods data coming out before market open tomorrow. But realistically, we just have some GDP data and some personal income and personal spending and then some PCE data. But besides that, we are all in the clear, Tom. So let's uh, jump back to SPY and let us know the key levels heading into this week. Yeah, so looking at last week, there was a pretty good double top around the end of the week, right around 563 to 563.20. I'm going to use that as a solid resistance. I've had 563.50 on the chart for a while, but I'm just going to respect that double top this week. If we break 563, that'll where I start. that's where I will start to become a little bit more bullish. Now, obviously, after that, the all-time high is right around 565. So we'll have to break 565, but if we do start to break out, 565 would be a good target to the upside now if we reject there's a few good supports i really like 560 and 558 from friday those were two very good important levels there and then 555 was a pretty important support overall last week so those are some levels i'll be looking at to the downside under 555 i do have like 552 
underneath there as well. But uh, that's what I'm looking for on Spy Mike. Hopefully we can push that all-time high here soon. Um, I think that there's a good chance, especially with the Spy closing high Friday. I think that that shows that the buyers are still fairly eager in the short term. Yeah, and we're a lot closer than most people think, Tom. We're around one half of 1% away, so we're super close. But besides that, let's get right into some setups and predictions. A stock I'm continuing to watch very closely is Zoom, and it is to the upside. We've been hitting on this stock quite a bit in a bullish way, and it has been ripping higher. Looking at Zoom, I still like the level it's at. Um, it's getting to that point where it's getting like close to being overextended in the short term, but it's also moving with a lot of momentum. So assuming that this price Race action stays strong. Uh, I still really like the bullish uh, reward to risk with this setup, but I will also say that if this stock shows weakness tomorrow, then you know there's no point in fighting that weakness. So basically, with this stock, as long as it continues the strength that it has had over the past couple of trading days, that'll show that the momentum and trend is still strong, and it's still a setup worth watching. Yeah, I like Zoom quite a bit too. That was amazing with earnings last week. And whenever we go to Zoom's daily chart, this explosion that we're seeing here is one of the better like two to three day moves that I've seen out of Zoom in a long time, right? And uh, whenever you see these big moves, sometimes they continue up for multiple days and even weeks at a time. And we're only on like day three right now. Now, it has been a great couple days though. I got to give it that. It, it is getting a little overextended, but... Um, I still like it to the upside as well, Mike. With my first play, I'm looking at CCJ here. I'm watching 4350 as resistance. I love the way that these uranium stocks were popping, and I think that this week, uh, if we start to see some nice bullish action out of commodities in general, CCJ could be another great option for Monday. So I'll be looking for a breakout above 4350, which is a pretty good double top there. Sounds great. Um, another stock I'm watching pretty closely is BABA, and it is to the upside. Uh, BABA had uh, a pretty good day on Friday as it closed up by 3%, and it has been uptrending very uh, consistently over these past couple of weeks and months. Uh, basically, it's getting closer and closer to a short-term breakout. A key level for this stock over like the past couple of years and months has been like this like $88 to $90 area. So we still have a little bit of room before we get to that key resistance level and again the stock is showing consistent bullishness um, so either way Alibaba will be close on my bullish radar for tomorrow and the rest of the week and the more pressure it puts on recent highs the stronger the setup becomes. Yeah, last week it dipped down for a couple days. I love the way on Friday it started to re-break that recent high. That was awesome. I'll definitely have it on the radar too. I uh, I was looking at Baba very closely myself. Uh, with the with my next play, I'm looking at DraftKings, and they are doing very well in the short term, Mike. Uh, you know, for the past two to three weeks, they have been continuing to just rip higher. On Friday, they closed high in after hours. They're pushing the high from last week. So if they can break that high from last week at 36.50, I'll be watching for them to continue and man the daily charts is looking so good on this recovery you know the past few weeks even like looking at the spy you know on its recovery it's just been such a great past few weeks for many stocks out there no doubt. Like, again, as we've talked about in videos, uh, the recent recovery was one of the strongest recoveries in stock market history. So it goes to show, it goes to say a lot that, you know, we're basically right back to all time highs just after the market was selling off in a pretty momentum filled way. So good stuff there. And let's jump right into today's momentum plays. And with the first one, we have N phase to the upside. ENPH, pretty interesting price action from Friday. If they can end up breaking out above 124, then keep watching them up. They were up 6.5%. All right. With the next one, we have RCL also to the upside. Yeah, Royal Caribbean, if they end up breaking out above 163.50, then watch them up as well. The cruise lines were killing it last week. All right, and then with the last one, we have MU for both directions. Yeah, so MU actually saw some weakness on Friday, but they are right around a key $100 level, and there's a pretty good resistance in the short term right around 105. So if we can see a good break on Monday above 105, I'll be watching them back to the upside, and I'll show you why 105 is going to be so crucial for me in just a moment. But even more crucial than that is the key $100 support. So uh, going over to the book map, Mike, we have 
100 and 105. Those are the two main levels from Friday. Um, I will be watching 105 for that upside breakout, but if $100 ends up giving out, I'll be looking at MU back down. But I don't know, Mike, that's a pretty big level. There's a lot of buyers stacked at 100, and I'm sure that whenever 100 hits, there's going to be a lot of scanners popping off too. Yeah, there are a lot of buyers stacked up there, so keep that close on watch. But for MU, we have the downside level for a potential move lower. We have the upside level for a potential move higher. Don't forget about the levels listed for RCL and Enphase as well. But either way, these three stocks are on watch for potential day trades if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. But besides that, Tom, we are all set for today's big money trades, and we actually have two of them today. So uh, with the first one, we are looking at a $900,000 trade with ticker symbol PRGO, and uh, basically the big money put $900,000 into the 30 strike call options that expire on November 15th of 2024. I thought this uh, big money trade was very interesting for multiple reasons, as this company is actually the company that manufactures um, Opil, which is the first FDA-approved over-the-counter birth control pill, and I think this is especially interesting given uh, how hot of a topic um, I guess you could say uh, reproductive rights and abortion and everything else like that has been for this year's election. And on top of that, the expiration for this options trade is uh, November 15th of 2024, which is just shortly after the election this year. So this seems like a big money election style trade and the stock is uh, already starting to move in a pretty momentum filled way. These call options aren't that far out of the money either. So let's keep a close eye on this one going forward. Yeah, and honestly, with PRGO, like, let's even say, like, the overall downtrend could even still be intact, but overall, I love the way it's starting to come up off of the dip, and whenever this stock starts to come up off of some of these dips, it will continue up for quite a while and start to test those recent resistances and start to fill some gaps. I'm definitely going to be watching some of these upcoming resistances in the next couple days, like $30, 32 and then even this, like, recent... I'm not going to say double top, but, you know, recent resistance around 33 to 34 as well. So uh, overall, that's very interesting, Mike. And, uh, you know, with the elections coming up, it, it does kind of add that like wrench into here. You know, it could be uh, pretty good for this stock. And I'm sure, uh, you know, the candidates will be mentioning these things pr uh, quite a bit over the next couple months. No doubt. And one thing I really want to add to a trade like this, because it's just so important, is that understand if you're considering following a big money trade like this, you have to give it the time that it needs. This option expires on November 15th. This is an election style trade. This is not something that should be day traded and look to be flipped the next day, because by doing that, you're not actually following like what the big money is uh, ultimately, ultimately looking to capitalize off of this situation. So definitely keep that in mind. But uh, again, we actually have two big money trades today. So with the second one is actually with Zoom and it is an $800,000 trade with the 80 strike call options that expire on December 18th of 2026. So this is a longer term one. I am definitely a fan of it, but this is, again, this is a longer term trade that, uh, you know, if it's followed, it has to be, again, traded with that longer term outlook. But Zoom is at a uh, very oversold level still, and it's finally starting to get uh, some momentum back with it off of this recent earnings report. So I thought this was uh, very interesting. Yeah, it is. And I'm glad it goes. I'm glad that they actually have more time because with how volatile Zoom is and with how high it got in the short term, you know, like let's say that it just consolidates for a few days, maybe comes down and test 66. Um, and then maybe next week, you know, we start to see it break back up above 70 and head towards 80, right? There's probably going to be quite a bit of volatility mixed in here following this big move. So I'm glad that they have the time. And that's also going to help it where like, you know, the stock having these wild moves, it won't be affected by the IV as much. So I, I definitely uh I definitely like that they went out to December on this one. And it just, you know, it allows people to hold this for a little while as well. And just like you said on the first trade, Mike, it definitely you need to give this some time, right? Like this one goes all the way out to December of 2026. So just keep that in mind. 
You know it, but as we look at everything right now, I think we have a very exciting week ahead of us. Uh, we have the market basically at all-time highs. We have stocks moving in ways that they haven't in quite a long time. Uh, I guess you could say geopolitical tensions are still doing their thing, and at the same time, we have quite the earnings schedule uh, ahead of us. As NVIDIA, CrowdStrike, Salesforce, and others are all set to report. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, consider demolishing that subscribe button we post brand new videos all the time and if you subscribe you'll get our videos recommended to you more often we cover everything you have to know about the market it takes us hours to make these videos so consider joining the stocked up crew and consider demolishing that subscribe button last but not least we want to give a giant shout out to today's member of the day magic maker in the stocked up discord who hit it out of the park on Friday with some Nvidia call options so this was a huge huge day for magic maker and as we scroll down he had a lot of great things to say as well he said the stocked up community has helped uh, trading decisions tremendously thank you Mike for your guidance and shout out to Tom and man as well. So huge shout out to Magic Maker. Congratulations on your enormous day and keep up the great work going forward. Besides that, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you guys want to get in on the stocked up trading floor, check out that first link in the description in the comments down below to get access to all of our bots, big money trades, live events, and everything else you can need as a short-term trader. Besides that, thank you all so much for watching and let's have a great week in the market.